Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Blog. This is Allie, and I'm very excited to share with you a recent experience I had on a carnival cruise. Yes, I went on the cheapest carnival cruise that I could find, and I'm here today to tell you all about it. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the surprising. Let's get into it. There are very few things in life that I love more than finding an incredible cruise deal. For me, it's so thrilling to find a last minute cruise deal that doesn't break the bank and actually works with my crazy life schedule. Booking a cheap cruise also means that I can spend money on things that I value in traveling, like splurging on food or really fun excursions. And it also allows me to travel and cruise more often. And let's be honest, who doesn't love that? Realistically speaking though, taking a cheap cruise requires you to have the right mindset and expectations. Whenever I snag a cheap cruise deal, I have to keep an open mind and maintain a positive attitude. And as I've gotten older, I've kind of learned the hard way that some deals really are too good to be true and more often than not, you get what you pay for. When I sail on a cheap cruise, I keep my expectations really low so that nothing can disappoint me. Just recently though, I had a really surprising experience with a very cheap cruise that I found on a last minute sailing on Carnival Ecstasy. This sailing was incredibly cheap and my low expectations were actually exceeded, which is something I never anticipated happening. So how did I find this cheap cruise? At the end of July, I started to research cruising options for the month of August. I started to look at Royal Caribbean's cruising options because I'm very loyal to Royal Caribbean. I'm really lucky to live within diving distance to multiple cruise ports like Port Canaveral, Tampa, Jacksonville, and New Orleans. But I really didn't feel like making the trek to their nearest cruise port because it requires 12 to 14 hours round trip of driving. These options also require me to get a hotel for the night before because I don't feel like risking it the day of. And although I felt like I was cheating on Royal Caribbean, I started to research some cheap cruises that were available on Carnival Cruise Line, which is known for having dirt cheap cruise fares. Looking at Carnival's cruise fares, I could immediately tell that the prices were significantly cheaper than Royal Caribbean's. I saw a Carnival cruise itinerary from Mobile, Alabama for only $519 for four nights on board Carnival Ecstasy. The itinerary featured two fun days at sea, which is Carnival's way of calling it a sea day, and one day in Cozumel, Mexico. This price was for an inside guarantee cabin, meaning we wouldn't get assigned a cabin until the day of the sailing. That price of $519 was for both of us and included taxes and fees. Gratuities added an additional $130, bringing the total to right around $650 for both of us. There was a catch, of course, as there usually is when you find a deal that seems too good to be true. I wasn't familiar with Carnival's fleet at the time, so I had no idea what Carnival Ecstasy had to offer. Come to find out, Carnival Ecstasy is actually the oldest cruise ship in Carnival's fleet. Built in 1991, Ecstasy is not only the oldest cruise ship sailing for Carnival Cruise Line, but my research found that it's also the oldest ship when comparing the fleets for virtually every major cruise line. I also learned that Ecstasy was retiring from the Carnival fleet and going to the scrapyard in October 2022. This is where cruise ships go to die, so she was only two months away from her retirement. We decided to pull the trigger anyway, though as it would certainly be an adventure if nothing else. My sister would be my cruise buddy for this. We've never cruised on a ship that was 31 years old, so we really had no idea what to expect. But we were excited to see what Ecstasy had to offer, as it had been over a decade since we had both cruised on Carnival. As I mentioned, I hadn't sailed on Carnival in over a decade. My first Carnival cruise was a four-night cruise with my family during high school over spring break. Even though we were still loyal Royal Caribbean cruisers back then, it was substantially cheaper to cruise on Carnival, so that's what we ended up doing. I remember enjoying the food, the entertainment, and the activities on board. In high school, I really didn't have anything to complain about, but the family agreed at the end that we still enjoyed the Royal Caribbean experience more. A few years later, my husband, then boyfriend, and I cruised on Carnival during our college spring break. Again, it was about $200 cheaper to cruise with Carnival instead of Royal Caribbean. And back in college, that was a lot of money to us. And we didn't really care about having a more upscale experience. We actually have really fond memories of that spring break cruise. And although the ship at the time, which was Carnival Fantasy, was older, we had so much fun on board and ashore. But since then, I haven't cruised with Carnival because I've been exclusively cruising with Royal Caribbean. But with Mobile being so close to my home, I was willing to try out this cruise line simply because of how convenient the port was. 
Now let's talk about my low expectations. Although I've had two positive experiences, I was worried that I had maybe outgrown the party and fun scene on carnival ships. I love relaxing on a cruise, kicking back with a drink, maybe reading a book and taking a lot of naps these days. I wasn't sure if the cruise would have tons of college age kids looking to get trashed all weekend, which certainly isn't my vibe anymore now that I'm older and married. Given all of the information that we found about Carnival Ecstasy and seeing how cheap the cruise would be, our expectations were realistically set pretty low. Everyone on social media jokes that Carnival is like the Spirit Airlines of the airport and the Walmart of the seas. So it was hard not to have a preconceived notion that this cruise would be janky, trashy, and maybe even a little scary. I joked to my family and friends, I hope we come back and live to tell the tale. So this weekend getaway left on a Thursday and it returned the following Monday morning. The morning of the cruise quickly approached. Angie and I woke up at home and we worked a little bit before hitting the road at 11 a.m. Our check-in time was at 1.30, but we wanted to allocate enough time in case there were traffic or we had any issues along the way. As we pulled up to the port, we could see the famous carnival tail in the distance, and we squealed, here we go, as we drove into downtown Mobile. Driving by the ship, we both stated how ecstasy appeared compared to modern cruise ships. We both agreed she definitely looked old with a very traditional 90s style of architecture and ship design. Parking at the port cost us $80 for the four nights, but we had to park offsite and wait 30 minutes for a shuttle to take us back to the terminal for check-in and boarding. I didn't love this because it felt like we were standing out in the heat with all of our luggage and the terminal really wasn't that far, but I guess we were one of the later boarding times, so that was what we were stuck with. And then boarding took more than an hour, which is probably because Mobile is not a popular destination for cruises. I think Carnival Ecstasy is actually the only ship this summer sailing from the terminal, so they probably just don't have a well-oiled machine like busier ports like Port Canaveral maybe do. As we boarded the ship, I felt like we were transported back to 1999. The walls were brightly painted with neon colors everywhere you looked. The ceilings were very low too, which made it feel much more cramped than newer ships. And everything was very dark with not a lot of natural light. Luckily, everything initially appeared to be very clean and well-maintained though. This immediately provided some sense of ease that Carnival hadn't totally let the ship go. Angie and I made our way to our stateroom once we were on board because they were available by the time we got on at 3 p.m. Our stateroom was M162, which initially meant absolutely nothing to us. We asked where M162 was, and one of the crew members said, oh, that's on deck M. And we laughed because we'd never been on a ship that didn't have its decks numbered. We learned that deck M was really deck five, so we made our way downstairs to drop off our luggage. The hallways felt almost brand new, and we noted how wide they felt compared to newer ships. Not exactly sure why the hallways would be wider on older ships, but it was definitely noticeable. As we opened the door to our cabin, we were really pleased with the initial appearance of our stateroom. There were two twin beds inside the stateroom with a small TV in the corner. A vanity was there with a mirror and a little seat that you could sit on. And then there were drawers that were adjacent to the mirror as well. And then we saw a standard closet that was connected to the vanity that had a safe, shelving, and hangers. There was definitely plenty of storage in here and we could have packed a lot more to fit with all of the shelving that was in this uh, closet. On the vanity, we found some masks and some informational sheets that we could use to scan QR codes and get more information on the ship. We could also look at the menus and the itinerary along with the daily schedules. But the bathroom definitely took us aback. We opened the door to find bright blue, bubbly and squishy flooring along the tiny bathroom floor. The toilet was so close to the wall that we actually had to sit sideways on it. But overall, the bathroom had everything we needed. And really, who cares too much about the bathroom? You're not spending that much time in there anyway. And most importantly, it was very clean. So we appreciated that as well. The decor in our cabin was minimal, but we didn't expect it to be modern, trendy or anything of the like. We knew it would be outdated. It almost felt like visiting your grandma's house. There's something comforting about it, even though it's not brand new. And as I read online, there was only one plug in for the room. This is where the room really showed its age. My sister and I had to rotate who could use the outlet, but it wasn't a major pain for four nights. And luckily I had a plug-in that had multiple USB outlets to charge multiple devices at once. And at the end of the day, we were pleased with the stateroom. We knew the decor would be outdated and it was exactly what you'd expect from a 30 year old ship that's had a few upgrades and is heading to its retirement. And we never spend too much time in our cabin anyway. So once we got on carnival, I definitely had some culture shock. 
This itinerary was a four-night sailing to Mexico and back with two days at sea and one day in port. Carnival refers to their sea days as fun days at sea, so I expected to see a lot of fun happening when we were traveling to and from Mexico. I've been to Cozumel more times than I'd like to admit, so this cruise was more about getting away from day-to-day life and experiencing what the ship had to offer and what Carnival had to offer. Our first day on the ship was really eye-opening. I've been living in the South for two years now, but I'm originally from the Midwest. I've adjusted to the demographics and the culture down here in the South. I don't think twice when I hear someone say y'all or they randomly yell roll tide, but I've never seen people board a cruise ship using plastic grocery bags as luggage. There were also some really wild outfits that I wouldn't consider an outfit, but more like pajamas, but to each their own. It felt a bit like culture shock though, honestly. We noticeably struggled to navigate the ship as well because nothing seemed to make sense where anything was located. Sometimes we'd have to go up one deck just to go the opposite side of the ship and then go back down to the same deck because we couldn't walk through. We constantly felt like we were getting caught in dead ends and then we'd get frustrated because we didn't know where we were going. It just wasn't very intuitive and there wasn't much flow. And it made us realize that ship design has clearly improved, especially in regards to design based on passenger flow. The parties and the fun started immediately, though, as we were on the top deck. There was this rowdy grandma that started to twerk on stage with the DJ the moment that he started playing tunes. The pool deck was filled with people who were already drunk and dancing to the music that was blasting through the speakers. We were a little surprised by it all, but it's kind of what I expected because it was a party cruise. World Caribbean definitely offers a bit more subdued experience, and nothing ever seems to get too wild on board in our experience, so we were just trying to adjust at this point. The first night I slept horribly. This ship was so noisy with people who were constantly walking by our room, talking loudly at all hours of the night. And our neighbors were a group of college friends who were also loud late into the night. I was surprised also by the number of announcements that started really early in the morning, like eight or 9 a.m. And they continued every hour about win a free excursion, come to the art auction, bingo is starting. If you're gonna encourage us to stay up late and have fun, please don't make announcements at eight or 9 a.m. because that's not fun in my mind. But regardless, our second day on the ship was the first full day at sea. And with a short cruise ahead of us, we wanted to stay busy and ensure that we got the full onboard experience. We tried out the sea day brunch, checked out the adults only serenity, and we had drinks at the blue iguana tequila bar and indulged in afternoon high tea. Our evening ended with dinner in the dining room and a comedy show. As for the onboard experience, the cocktails were yummy, the afternoon tea had a wide selection of delicious desserts, and the sea day brunch really did blow us away. We also noticed that so many people were having fun and everybody was really friendly. It was clear to us that everyone was here to have a good time on their getaway weekend cruise. We found ourselves being surprisingly impressed by everything that we experienced and tried. Nothing really disappointed us. We were having more fun than I expected. But Carnival really leans into its most fun ships at sea branding. You can't look anywhere without seeing fun bolded in your face. And they can't make an announcement without using the word fun either. Carnival not only wants you to have fun, but they want you to think about fun every second of your cruise. So if you can't beat them, join them. How did we join the fun squad? The third day of our Ford night cruise, we were docked in Cozumel. This was the only port on the itinerary, so we made plans to get off the ship. During our time in port, we walked to the Del Mar Latino Beach Club. This small exclusive beach club offers day passes with the unlimited food and drinks. The day pass includes access to the pool with loungers and also access to the ocean. The beach club was limited to just 30 people, so it was a really nice experience. We spent the day in Cozumel trying a variety of tropical drinks, lounging in the pool, and sampling some bar snacks. It was a relaxing and fun day in Mexico, and we appreciated how convenient the beach club was. We ended the night with dinner at the dining room and a visit to the comedy club again. We also laughed our way through the love and marriage game show. By this point, we were finding things that we really liked about Carnival. For example, the trivia themes were all geared towards our demographics. We're used to name that 60s tune and the 70s disco party in Royal Caribbean, which doesn't always appeal to us. Events and activities were short too because they only lasted 30 minutes. So this allowed us to do more and it really cultivated to Carnival's higher paced energy and environment on board. Our last day was another sea day where we squeezed in everything we could. By this day, we were fully embracing the carnival culture and having a lot of fun. We could make our way around ecstasy without getting totally lost as well. Started the morning with brunch, we explored the ship, we had a few poolside drinks, and we crushed it at music trivia. We decided to dress really casually for dinner, just as we saw everybody else doing a few nights before. I didn't bother to even put on makeup, earrings, or cute shoes. Normally, I make a special effort to look nice for evenings on board a cruise ship, but this just wasn't the carnival vibe. 
The night ended with one final visit to the comedy club, and we both agreed that we were actually having way more fun on this cruise than we ever expected. I surprised myself by how much fun I was having. Normally, I'm too tired to do entertainment at night, but I found myself energized by the energetic atmosphere on board. So let's talk about Ecstasy's dining options. Carnival Ecstasy has a multitude of dining options for us to enjoy. From Sea Day Brunch to Pizza Pirate, Guy's Burger Joint, and Blue Iguana Burritos, there were a lot of really good options to choose from, and I was surprised that this old ship had all of these signature Carnival offerings. And to start, we heard rave reviews about Carnival Sea Day Brunch, so we were excited to try that first. We were both super impressed with the 12-hour French toast and the scallop pancake. Angie and I agreed that the 12-hour French toast, which was caramelized and crispy on the edges and topped with roasted peaches, was maybe the best French toast that we've ever had. The fluffy and slightly sweet skillet pancake was also dangerously delicious. The main dining room food, though, was about what we expected for dinners. It was nothing amazing, but definitely had a variety of choices, and we enjoyed going there every night. We actually loved getting to know the girls at our table over the course of the cruise, and we appreciated that we were seated with people who are close to our age. We've been seated with people who aren't even close to our age on Royal Caribbean and other cruises, but this made us look forward to dinner every night, and we had a lot of fun. During dinner, our table had a riot. We were laughing about the table entertainment and dancing with the crew members during their nightly shows in the dining room. The food service, especially in the dining room, was kind of hit or miss, though. I think the staffing shortage was a factor in this case because our servers always seemed pretty frazzled. We didn't always get what we asked for unless you asked multiple times, but none of us complained. And again, kind of what you would expect. But the food at Guy's Burger Joint and Blue Iguana were both really good. Angie and I also enjoyed the pizza at Pizza Pirate and the sandwiches from Carnival Deli. We were least impressed by the Lido buffet, especially for the morning breakfast buffet. Everything tasted really mediocre to us, especially in comparison to the brunch menus that are offered in the dining room. But the pizza and the deli sandwiches in the Lido buffet were really good and probably the best options available. Overall, we were impressed by some of the food and disappointed in others. Given how cheap this cruise was, though, it was in alignment with our expectations. So here's my final thoughts on this carnival experience. This cheap last minute cruise on Carnival Ecstasy has definitely changed my opinion on Carnival Cruise Line. I had really low expectations for what a super old ship and a party cruise line could offer and whether it would be a good fit for me these days. So to start, a weekend cruise on Carnival was inevitably going to have major party vibes. Everything about Carnival is meant to be fun. This is Carnival's brand, and this is how they market themselves. But this cruise reaffirmed the notion that there's a cruise line out there for everybody, and it reiterated just how important it is to pick the right cruise ship for your travel style. If you were looking for luxury, this cruise would have left you utterly disappointed. There was nothing about this cruise that was luxurious or refined. But on the other hand, if you were looking for some really good, super cheap fun, then this was an excellent choice. Those looking to have a wild weekend away in Mexico, maybe with girlfriends or with your spouse or your family members, they would love everything about this cruise. I also believe it's important to know what you're looking for when you go cruising. I've had cruises where we wanted to explore new cities every day, and we ended up not spending much time letting loose on board because it wasn't our priority. But when it came to this cruise... It would be perfect for those looking to have a fun, carefree weekend away from home. This is a cruise that was all about having a great time without breaking your budget. At first, I thought this cheap cruise was not my vibe. After the first few days, though, we started to get acquainted with everything, and I felt like we really got into the carnival spirit by adapting to the culture. So I'd love to try the carnival experience again on a newer ship to see all of the bells and whistles that this cruise line has to offer. And in fact, I hope to sail on Carnival Celebration in November to see how the carnival experience compares on the cruise line's newest ship. So that was my experience this weekend. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever cruised on a ship that's older than you and what was your experience like? Hopefully you found this video insightful and if you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the Cruise Blog channel so you can get notified every time we have a new video. Until next time, everybody, happy cruising.